Good evening. I'd like to call the April 27th, 2023 North Hills Board of Education Committee meeting with action to order. Please rise for a moment of silence and salute to the flag. Good evening again, everybody. Uh, this morning we're going to begin, or this evening, we're going to begin with a very special performance. So I'd like to introduce Mr. Sean Clunan and the North Hills Singers. Probably should have had you just stay standing because we're going to begin with the national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sing, can you sing by the dawn's early
spending some time sightseeing in the city, and then we'll get to see a Broadway show on Sunday afternoon. So we're heading back, and starting into AP exams on Monday. <laughs> Our final selection, as is always when I bring the choirs, is Northfield's alma mater. if the students took a moment to introduce themselves. so much for coming this evening. That was wonderful. And I wish you, and I'm sure we all wish you safe travels. And I hope you have a wonderful and memorable trip in New York City. Thank you so much for coming tonight. What musical are you going to be seeing? Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Okay, I'd like to move on to board member comments now, and I will first announce that prior to this evening's meeting, the board met in executive session to discuss personnel and legal matters. Um, and I'll begin board member comments this evening um, because I do have a comment in response to several questions the board and I have received as to whether an employee's name can be referenced during public comment. You may recall this happened at our last board meeting. During the comment, I consulted with our solicitor, who advised me that the comment was not in violation of our pro public participation policy. This policy, which is policy 903, public participation in board meetings, was written in line with the Sunshine Law, which requires that residents and taxpayers, and North Hills also added employees to our policy, have a reasonable opportunity to comment on matters of concern, official action, or deliberation, which may be before the board before any official action is taken. There is an additional policy, which is policy <clears throat> 906, complaints, that sets guidelines for, among other things, handling a complaint concerning a member of our instructional staff. The complainant should first attempt to address their concerns with the staff member, then with the building principal, then with the superintendent, followed by the board. Whether this board wants to reconsider our public participation policy to incorporate language from the policy above that I just explained is something we can discuss as a board in consultation with our solicitor if a majority of the board is interested in doing so. Obviously, the board welcomes public comment, and you know this may be positive, negative, or neutral, as public comment is a valuable source of information, and we appreciate those who take the time to attend the board meetings and participate. Free speech is a cornerstone of our democracy and the public meeting process. Sometimes we may disagree with the sentiments of comments. Sometimes we may agree with them. Certainly, I work very hard to stay neutral when running the meeting and keep my personal sentiments aside. That being said, I'd ask that we all remember that we are all neighbors in the same community. We all want the best education and experiences for all, the, for all of the students in our schools and a positive atmosphere for our employees. Are there any other board member comments this evening? Yeah, um, last meeting I 
mentioned that the PSBA has asked us to put their legislative platform on our agenda for April, May, or June um, to talk about if we, uh, just to discuss their legislative platform, if anyone has any feedback on it. Um, we would need to um, have any changes that we would want submitted to them by June 30th, so I'm just wondering if anybody has thought about whether or not they would like to have that as an agenda item so that we can discuss the legislative platform. I did not receive any, <coughs> excuse me, I did not receive any comments or emails about it. I guess I, I I'll just, just chime into saying as the function of being the legislative liaison, if someone has something, I guess it makes sense to channel it through um, and then bring it through, I guess. I'm just kind of spitballing here, but it seems like it makes sense. I'm saying just serving as a legislative liaison, if there's something, obviously you PSBA platform would deal with legislation and things of that nature. So if there's anything like that, channel it through me. And I guess if there is, we can we can bring it here and talk about it. That's just kind of thinking of the process of it. Yeah, that's fine with me. I just yeah, I mean the PSBA asked us to put it on our agenda, so I just <coughs> wanted to see if we were going to do that. Um, yeah. So yeah, however we I mean, want to do I, it. I think fine that. With <coughs> I think they asked us to, if we are interested in, in submitting an item to be considered for their legislative platform, to then put it on our agenda and then vote for it and submit it. But I guess the question is whether or not anybody on the board um, or a majority of the board is interested in pursuing that. Th that's what they're asking sure. for. Sure. Yeah. So how do we have that discussion without it being a scheduled part of the agenda to see if anybody wants to put something in the platform? That's, I guess that's what I'm asking. Is I mean, if the answer is no, nobody wants to add anything, do we talk about it during board member comments or do we put it on the agenda and, and decide that then? I don't know how to do this process. Sure, yeah. I mean, nobody has, uh, again, nobody's reached out to me. I don't know if anybody's discussed it without me indicating that they're interested in it. So at this point, I don't know that the board is interested in, a majority of the board is interested in adding something to the legislative platform. And but just feel free can, to speak up if you are. Yeah, and we also have the option to modify something, right. like to request a modification of the existing platform as well. So correct. Yeah. And actually, on the um, agenda today, further on under Mrs. Uh, Niece's items, I believe is the appointment of the delegates to the delegate assembly, which get to consider and vote on the legislative items that are on the PSBA platform. So even if this board doesn't submit an item to be considered, we still have um, three members that have a voice in the process. I'm sort of, I'm neutral on it, so whatever everybody else wants to do, it's fine. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. Uh, are there any other board member comments? Madam President, I just have something. Yes. Uh, so, uh, as we all know, the PSSAs are under wraps. Uh, we're, well, not under wraps, we're in the process of taking them right now. So, I just wanted to send a shout out to all of the students who are working very, very hard uh, to try their best on these exams. Um, all the teachers who are helping to administer them and all the administrators who are helping to maintain our test security. Uh, it can be sort of that looming specter for uh, everyone involved, but um, my daughter who's now in third grade told me, you know, it wasn't actually that bad. So, uh, and this was her first time taking it. So. Just a big shout out to everyone for all your hard work and uh, continued success on those exams. Thank you. Any other board members with comments? Okay, well now it's time for my favorite part of the meeting, the uh, student representatives report. So Ella and Alyssa, I will turn it over to you. everyone. It's been a while since we've done a report, but we certainly have some updates for you. Yeah. Right. So first off, North Hills Thon was hosted um, last Saturday, and we raised $19,116 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is $1,000 more than last year's total. And I believe somebody told me that it was the most in North Hills history, wow. which is incredible. Wow. Yeah. 
Um, it was moved to the middle school this year, um, as opposed to Martorelli, but that didn't stop anybody from having the time of their lives. I've heard fantastic things from the community and the kids, um, especially for Community Thon, when we have a couple like sports representatives teach the kids about um, their sports, and a bunch of the food was a hit too. Um, so score for future. Um, a new competition this spring was sponsored by the Pittsburgh Penguins, and myself, along with three of my friends, um, Leah, Ava, and Abby, um, participated in it. Um, and we first toured um, PPG Paints Arena, and then we toured Evoqua Water Technologies, which helps filter like um, dirty water to purify it and recycle it. Um, so we were supposed to make a solution, a sustainable solution, um, that would help PPG modify their arena um, to make it more sustainable for their fans um, and for their arena, obviously. Um, so we presented our project last week, and we titled it Berg to Berg, as in Pittsburgh to Iceberg. Um, and it was based around um, a sustainable fountain in which they would reuse the ice um, off the rink and put it into the fountain. We unfortunately did not win that competition. Um, I know, but if you ask any of us, we will tell you that it is alive and well and that PPG will be putting a fountain in the arena. But unfortunately, awesome. that's actually not true, though. Don't actually take that to us. <laughs> But anyways, we were really proud of the effort that we put into it and about our project. And so even though we did not win, that was still a fantastic experience to have. And to present it in front of um, a whole panel of judges and in front of other schools that we competed with um, was really something. So along that line as well, um, for AP Environmental Science, um, each student was um, tasked with doing an independent research project. Um, and about two weeks ago, um, everybody from that class presented their projects at Camp Conaqui, um, and there were a bunch of middle schools and high schools that also took up that task as well. And that's in collaboration with Creek Connections, that's run by Allegheny College. And yes, that is me again. And I, my independent research project was about the genetic diversity um, of yellow-tailed clownfish in three different um, Asian locations. Um, but we also had people um, go through like pH levels of water and what happens if you try and grow a plant with salt water and also about like what's the best disposable wipes to use like in the toilet. And then that far right picture um, is us going outside looking for spotted lanternflies. Nice. So prom. Prom is also coming up. Um, I believe it's in two weeks. Um, Saturday, May 13th, it's going to be at Akershire Stadium again. But they chose a different location. Um, in Akershire Stadium, and I hear that that was the right choice um, based on the feedback I got from other people last year. Um, and they have a buffet this year. They do, yeah. <laughs> in case anybody's wondering, there is a buffet this year. Um, and the theme is Rapunzel. It's, um, the yeah, Tangled. So they're using um, lanterns, and then obviously the tagline is At Last We See the Light. So I'm curious to see how they're going to decorate it. Um, so Stand Together Jeopardy, um, during um, the lunch periods throughout the past about a um, week and a half, the Stand Together Club, which deals a lot with like mental stigma and raising awareness on mental health, um, they modeled their whole presentation after Jeopardy, and students could win like bracelets um, and lollipops. Um, and their whole goal is to teach s teachers and students different signs of somebody who may be struggling mentally. And so that was a really fun thing to see when you walk in and you're like, oh, I'll play Jeopardy for a lollipop. <laughs> So Arts Alive is coming up um, next Friday um, from 5 to 8, and it showcases the work of all of our fantastic students. I've seen some of the artwork that some of them put together, um, from pottery to drawing to all their sculptures. It's always fantastic. Um, and there are some music department performances. I know orchestra had a small group um, sign up for it, and they'll be presenting some of the pieces that they play. It'll just be like five of them. You also have culinary options from the World Language Department, so that's French, Spanish, German, um, and Latin. Uh, there will also be other beverages um, served by the North Hills um, Brew Crew, and also a game fest showcasing games created by um, North Hills students. Okay. Um, one sport that I wanted to talk about because I'm on the team is track, and so Last Friday, we had a big Butler Invitational. It was insane. We got there at 9.15 a.m. and didn't leave until 9 p.m. But we had some really great finishes. In the hurdles, Gama took second and third in the 300 and 110, respectively. 
and Caden Leitner took fifth place in the 800 meter dash, as well as the boys 4x8 relay team took fifth place, and that's Daniel Ceteriano, Caden Leitner, Charles Vega, and Logan Baxter. And we're heading into our invite season, which is basically when we're trying to get our times down to qualify for Whitfields, <laughs> which is on May 17th. And there are a lot of students really on track to qualify, like Riley Franz and Lily Hilligus in the 800 meter for the girls, Caden in the 400 meter and the 800 meter for the boys, and Gama in the 110 hurdles and the 300 hurdles, as well as our boys 4x400 and 4x800 relay teams. And that's really impressive to go. So it should be a really great year. Best communities for music education, North Hills for the ninth year in a row, which is really awesome that the community is recognizing how unique our band program is and how special we are with the opportunities we have here. The Wind Ensemble went to All East, and this was April 13th and 14th, and it was really, really cool. We got to perform at the NAFME All Eastern Convention, so basically our band and one other high school band were chosen as the model of all the bands in the entire Northeast to play for all the band directors, and they got to all hear us. And we also went to Niagara Falls the next day, and that's a picture of me and my friend at Niagara Falls. And it was really cool just being with the whole entire band at the top of Niagara Falls, because that's not something that most people can say they did. So that's us. It was a really good time. All State Band and Orchestra was this past weekend, and we had eight students go, which is really impressive. Elaine on the horn, Valerio on the viola, Logan on trumpet, Josh on trombone, Paige on the flute, Trevor on trumpet, Gabby on bassoon, and Tyler on the clarinet. And it was a really great time from what I've heard. Okay, New York City Music Department tour, we're leaving tomorrow. I actually just came from marching band rehearsal. So tomorrow, the marching band and all of our concert bands and the orchestra and the choir are all gonna be having clinics with the instructors at Messiah University. And then on April 29th and 30th, we're going up to New York City. Some of our highlights are gonna be, we're gonna visit the Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island, the One World Trade Center, and we're gonna to get to walk the Brooklyn Bridge and see a Broadway show. I know I'm personally going to Aladdin. And unfortunately, it's supposed to rain a lot, but we have, apparently Mr. Lavelle got 280 ponchos. So we're gonna, we're gonna do it anyways. We're gonna have a great time, and I'm really excited. And then there are still a lot more band concerts to come. There's a guitar ensemble concert, middle school choir, high school orchestra, high school choir, high school band, every senior felt well concert. It should be a really great month of May for music. Okay, and then another thing that I'm gonna be presenting tonight is an independent research project that I've been working on. Oh yeah, sure. At the um, high school. Alyssa is just passing copies of my project to the board, but so basically, for the past year, I've been working on this project with the gate department at the high school. It's really special because you can choose anything you want to talk about or anything you want to look at. So I'm a student that's very involved in sports. Like I said, track and band, and I do golf. And I noticed that my involvement was really impactful in my mental health, especially during COVID when everyone was so isolated. Having a sports team was really important to me. And so I wanted to see if other North Hills students felt the same way as me. My hypothesis was that those involved in extracurriculars would have lower rates of depression and that physically active extracurriculars would have a stronger positive effect on student wellness than non-physically active extracurriculars because of that added benefit of physical activity. Like we've all heard of a runner's high and stuff like that. So to test this, I developed a survey and I ran it by Mr. Hosa, who's the gate mentor. He's been really helpful and I also got it approved by the principal, Mr. McKiernan. And I sent it out through email and through the English Google Classrooms. And I actually got a really re great response rate. About 35% of the student body responded, which is really good for a survey. And some of the questions that I asked were like, what sports do you play? How do you feel during your sports on season? And then I also, just to get a little standardized measure of depression, asked a PHQ-8 depression test, which is basically that thing that the doctors give you whenever you go in the doctor's office. And it's like, how many times in the last two weeks have you been fidgety? Or how many times have you had trouble sleeping? So it's just a very standard test that kind of measures what your rates of depression are. And I don't want to go into too much detail, but basically what I found is there's a very high rate of depression among students, which was surprising. We've all known, obviously, that COVID has had a huge impact on mental health, but the data definitely reflected this, so I think it was very important. And also, we did ask for a his I asked for a history of depression, and we found that a lot of students have undiagnosed depression. And 
I also found that, which is a good thing, is that participation in extracurriculars does have a very positive impact on student wellness and mental health, and that physically active extracurriculars correlate with lower rates of depression when compared with non-physically active ones, which just reinforces the idea that students should get involved in any way they can. And of course, there were some limitations with my project because some students aren't able to participate in extracurriculars, which is something that we all need to be aware of and address. And respondents to the survey, because it was sent out through my email, through emails and through Google Classroom, probably more involved students are more likely to check those places. So we might be missing the most, the students who maybe need this data the most. And obviously some other factors that impact depression that I could not ask about were social media use, alcohol or drug use, gender or race and ethnicity. And also the survey was conducted during December which is the depression rates. And I did speak to a guest speaker that the Gate Department had in about this because she's working at Gannon University doing a project about seasonal depression. So it was really interesting to hear her feedback about this. But still, I think the data is very relevant, especially in the world that we are in now. And so basically, I just think that it's important that we encourage students to be involved and especially physically active. I think it's really great that we have no-cut teams like the marching band and like track, both of which I'm involved in. And also, all students can pursue physical activity in community-based groups like Ross Rec. Really, any way they can get involved is very helpful. And as Alyssa passed out my presentation, that's like my full thing. There's fancy bar graphs and tables with all the interesting data. But you might find some of the results surprising, and I would be happy to talk to you more about it. But I encourage you to take a look. Thank you. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Girls, before you sit down, I would like to personally thank you for your report. It is always informative, and it's right up to the last minute, and we really appreciate that. And also, Ella DeMoise, I would like to congratulate you on having an 800 on your math SATs. Wow. Great wow. job. Thank you both so much for coming tonight. Um, we don't have anybody signed up for public comments on agenda items. So next, we will vote on the next group of items, which were discussed um, last week as a consent. So the superintendent recommends, and I so move, that the board approve consent items 1 through 24. D. Spade, I'll second that. Any discussion on any of those items? Um, I just want to mention that I did not receive any feedback on any of the policies, which I usually do mention. Thank you. That's a good point. Yeah. Noted. Is there any <laughs> other discussion? <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next this evening, I believe we have a presentation um, from SiteLogic with an update on the Westview Elementary renovation. Maybe. Hi. <laughs> Surprise. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me tonight. I'm uh, Shane Kelly with Site Logic. I'm the project manager on the Westview Elementary construction project. I'm just going to give you a brief update this evening on our activities thus far in the project, where we stand, and what is expected in the near future. So to begin, I'm going to go over a few uh, architectural floor plans just to give you an idea of where we're working at in the building at this time. Uh, for those of you who do not know, we're ultimately going to be touching every you know, square foot of this building. Uh, but we have this phased throughout the next you know, year and a half to two years. So to start, as you can see, uh, I'm going to begin on the ground floor where we're actively working. The areas in red uh, are where we're currently at. Those are considered phase 2A and 2B. Uh, some of the activities have been, that have been ongoing in those spaces are uh, excavation, foundations, structural steel. Again, right now it's uh, in a phase down there where we've broken apart uh, bits and pieces of the area we're working in and are beginning to structurally put it back together uh, in accordance with the new design. Uh, jumping up to the first floor, uh, again, we've got that area in red. That is pr the primarily the addition space uh, of the building that some of you have already seen you know, the uh, renderings of it. That's really the part of the building that pops and uh, is really going to look great when it's 
all said and done. So that area in red, again, that's where we're working uh, in currently. I've got some photos of, of ongoing activities uh, in that area. Not to confuse anyone, there is an area on there that is uh, a yellow-orange. That is also part of 2A and 2B, but is inside the building, and we are currently not working in there. Uh, we'll be taking over that space uh, after this uh, school semester. So this summer, we'll take that over uh, and be in that area <coughs> until December. Uh, so just to backtrack a little bit, uh, phase 2A and 2B, that is the in, uh, addition space, as well as some interior renovations. That area will be running from uh, January when we got in there, uh, January of 23 to December of 23 is when it will be turned back, to over, turned back over to the school district. And then the 2C area is uh, primarily renovations to classrooms, restrooms, uh, corridors, whatnot. That is slated for this summer. And then finally, this is the top floor of the building. Uh, we are not in any of these areas at this point in time. Uh, we've started some investigation removing uh, ceiling tile, and with the approval of the administration, have uh, taken down some cable train in the blue areas. Uh, again, the, the red area. This is the second floor, so in the coming weeks, we'll be uh, erecting steel and getting up to that level. But at this point in time, there's nothing being done on the, on the second floor, per se. Uh, finally, this is just a recap, basically, of the activities we've uh, been involved with, or ongoing activities and, and prior activities that we've gotten into thus far. Uh, we've been involved in demolition, excavation for the addition, uh, grading for the addition, concrete and CMU foundations, uh, foundation waterproofing at the addition, uh, steel erection, framing, and ceiling removal. And then up and coming activities will be mechanical, electrical, plumbing, rough in, uh, forming and pouring of the addition slabs, site utility coordination, uh, again, interior demolition starting this summer. And then ultimately what we're working on more than anything right now is preparing for the work that is to occur this summer. Uh, we've got a very heavy lift. There's going to be a lot of change in development you'll see over the course of this summer. And so we're in a very heavy uh, planning phase at this point in time. Uh, as soon as, you know, the school's emptied and uh, we're in there and, and have access to those parts of the building, uh, we'll be hitting the ground running. So. Um, just to conclude, things are going very well out there at this point in time. Uh, the general contractor has been great, uh, as well as the Giza subcontractors that we have involved in the project. Uh, so things are on schedule, moving along nicely. Uh, very excited to continue to update you all um, on this project, especially as we start to um, get into the finish phase where you can really see the result. Uh, right now, it's difficult to see and I think really grasp where we're headed uh, because we're really demolishing stuff and prepping the framework and, and foundations for what's to come. So uh, again, I look forward to continuing to update you. Are there any questions on what's currently ongoing at this time? I just had two real quick. Um, you mentioned that your timelines, you're, you're good on everything? At this, yes, we are. Okay. Yeah, so to add to that, uh, the administration at Westview has been great to work with. Uh, They've allowed us into some areas where, you know, we may not have been able to get in there until school let out, uh, but certain areas that are not being used at this point in time, uh, we were able to develop plans to isolate those areas, partition them off so that there's no uh, overflow into, you know, active student spaces. And so it's little stuff like that. Is, it's helped a lot and okay. gotten us, I don't want to say ahead of schedule, but just really kept us right on track and uh, allowed us to investigate parts of the building we would not have seen otherwise until this summer. So. It's helped us kind of forecast and plan for what's to come. Great. And then just one more. Have, during this whole time, have you had any unexpected challenges that have arise that during this that you didn't see happening or any issues? We, we have. And so some of the primary challenge we've seen is that, uh, you know, we're going into a, a very old building and we're taking it apart and going into places that, um, you know, we tried to do as much investigation as possible. But again, it's been built on... The building, it seems, has been built on top. Parts and pieces of it have basically been stacked. It's been built on top of itself. So as we're demolishing stuff and, and getting deeper into it and able to rip things apart, we're seeing things might be built and construct, have been constructed a little differently than we anticipated. So that's been a challenge. And in fact, um, somewhere where that would have been an even bigger challenge is on the, I'm going to jump back for a second just to kind of illustrate this. So this red area. And 
Uh, it's a huge structural component to the building that we're, we're basically demolishing and rebuilding. And so there were some unforeseen in that space uh, as we started to rip it apart and see how this was built back in. I believe that's the 1925 portion of the building. So it was built a long, long time ago. And so there were areas of that. And the way that was constructed was not how we initially uh, anticipated. And because we were able to get in there several months earlier than we thought, it really gave us a window of time and um, a, a significant amount of time to kind of assess that and come up with a plan to move forward with that, rather than it causing a delay or an issue. Uh, so that's really been the biggest challenge, I think, is as we're taking the building apart, um, seeing things that we did not expect and okay. then having to problem solve that and move forward. Uh, fortunately, a lot of the, a lot of the actual, like, uh, I guess, demolition and, and pulling the building apart is coming from, it's occurring right now. So we've gotten through most of that. Uh, the stuff that we're going to be doing in the future, you know, throughout next school year and next summer, it's mainly renovations in the existing building where we're not going to be ripping apart structure and rebuilding. So we've gotten what I think is, I think was everyone's biggest fear. We've gotten a large chunk of that out of the way. So the biggest hurdle that you saw is this right here. Once we get past here. Without a doubt. Okay. I will tell you right now, the most difficult part of this project is going to be uh, this summer and in, really it's going to be this summer. Okay. And then, um, I don't want to say we're in the clear, but getting through the summer, getting the stair tower and the new uh, clear story yeah. built, which is going to be, uh, it's going to be a magnificent part of the building. I think getting that closed in this summer and demoed and constructed is going to be our, our largest challenge. And that's where all this planning comes okay. into play. Thanks. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have, I've previously inquired about the environmental impact of this project, and I'm sorry I don't remember if you were one of the presenters when I did that, but I'm wondering if it's, if it's on our radar to have a couple slides in an upcoming presentation about how we are doing this with the environment in mind. So for our next presentation, I'll make sure to include Perfect, uh, something along those lines. And just to give you some background, a portion of this project is what they call a, a, a Giza contract. It's a guaranteed energy service agreement. and so. Um, what allows us to move forward with those types of projects and, and build them and design them is the basis of design is it's energy friendly, it's energy saving. So that's roofing, windows, mechanical equipment, um, electrical components, basically modernizing all those and using you know, the technology we now have um, allows for the building to be more efficient. And so that's actually modeled out and graphed. Uh, during our design and development phase, so you can really see what the anticipated savings is of this building um, with these upgrades and changes. And then uh, another really cool component of the building is the addition is actually going to have a green roof on it. Um, so it will be, you know, planter, irrigated planters, and aesthetically it's going to be great, but uh, that's, again, a green component to the building. Um, so yeah, we're excited to see that come, come together as well. But Thank moving you. forward, I'll, I'll make sure to include a, a portion for... Uh, Again, just energy components yeah. on these presentations. Thank you. Definitely. Any other questions? Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Golf class. Golf class. <laughs> Well, you should have saved your applause because I am about to introduce Mr. Jerry Muth, who is going to be talking about the proposed final budget. Perfect time. Jerry. Good evening. The last time we met um, two weeks ago, and if anybody participated in the public budget committee meeting, as well as the finance committee meeting. And throughout the budget season, my primary objective was trying to get us to a point where we had a balanced budget without affecting the tax rate. And I thought I had achieved my goal. Um, we were in balance as of about a week ago. But upon further review, from my perspective, I'm not sure I was giving the best options for us moving forward next year and into the future by just aiming to just balance without uh, making sure everything was, we were comprehensively looking at everything. So the one element that was not in this proposed budget previously up until this past few days is historically we have made a contribution or a transfer to the capital projects fund annually in an effort to uh, build up that balance for unanticipated projects as well as certain projects that we want to uh, do in the near or distant future. 
So the budget that I'm presenting to you tonight actually is $500,000 higher than it was a week ago and does include a tax increase of 0.92% or 0.18 mils. Um, so the projected tax rate would go from 19.7 mils to 19.88. Again, the proposed tax increase would be used for the capital projects fund transfer. We did have the ability to raise the taxes up to the index of 4.8% or 0.95 mils, and had we done that, that would have raised uh, 2.8 million. Just to sidetrack temporarily, uh, the impact of that tax increase is shown for various levels of assessed property values. I went by 50,000 increments, but I did slide in there what was the median assessed value based on the homestead exemptions last year of 136,600. Um, the maximum annual increase on a $300,000 home would be $54. The maximum increase on a $100,000 home would be 18 and would fall in between there. And then the monthly increases range from $1.50 a month to approximately $4.50. Again, that's not to trivialize any tax increase. If you know me, I cannot stand raising taxes personally. Anybody raises my taxes doesn't make me happy. So I completely understand if you're in the position that you're not thrilled with that either. But I do think it's necessary, um, from, again, from a, not only a short-term but a long-term opportunity to raise the taxes if you can in a reasonable manner with justification. Um, and we did discuss throughout the budgeting season that we do have uh, fund balances sitting around and it's often a question as to why don't we tap into the fund balance rather than raise taxes. The parameters that we look at is the board policy which sets a minimum that we are trying to attempt to at a minimum keep a fund balance of 4% of total expenditures. In the proposed budget, we would sit at 5%. The upper level, which PDE establishes, is 8%. Above that, if you had a fund balance, you would not be able to raise taxes at that point. So that takes care of why I think we'd be in a strong position currently with our unassigned fund balance at 5%. It's a good spot to be in. And we do have one uh, assigned fund balance that's relating to the Pennsylvania State Employee Retirement System that has been accumulating for several years, and we have used pieces of it, but it does remain. And the question arises, this coming school year, the contribution rate is actually going down for the first time in probably 15 to 20 years. We did not elect, or I'm suggesting, not to use that this current year because although we are going to have a reduction for 23-24, it is anticipated that the rate, again, is going to go up in succeeding years. Had we unassigned that portion and added it to the 4.8 million that is sitting there, our fund, unassigned fund balance would still be within the 4 to 8% range. It would actually be at 6.96%. So I'm not suggesting at this point in time that we would use any of the assigned fund balances for balancing the budget. Additionally, there are a few assumptions that are embedded in the 23-24 budget um, that if they don't come to fruition, we would have to use the fund balance to compensate for. The primary example is in the governor's proposed budget, both the basic education subsidy and the special education subsidy are proposed to increase. In the last couple years, when they've proposed them, they have actually passed at those rates. But historically, that has not always been the case. So although we are optimistic that that will happen again this year, should that not happen, we again would have a FUD balance sufficient to accommodate that should that happen. The other argument out there as far as um, making sure we maintain a good fund balance is we do anticipate uh, borrowing funding for the one of few renovations project. And anybody that looks at our financial position right now and specifically at our fund balance would conclude that we are in a very strong position and thus a more likely strong candidate uh, when we go and pursue funding. Finally, we are looking beyond 23-24 to succeeding years. And among the issues that may arise that challenge our budget is in the 23-24 budget, we are currently enjoying a favorable interest rate as it relates to our uh, cash balances throughout the year. As you may already recognize, taxes are collected in the first part of the year up through October primarily. Um, so we have our biggest cash balances in the earliest parts of the year. 
we are anticipating the market from an interest rate standpoint to be relatively favorable that up until that time, um, although there are predictions that the interest rates are going to eventually start to decrease again. So our budget for 23-24 is balanced, including this tax increase, based on a very favorable level of interest income. We do not, we do not foresee that happening or perpetuating into the future, so we will have to make up that difference moving forward. Other things that are on the horizon is we have three collective bargaining agreements that will come under negotiations in the consecutive years, starting with the 24-25 school year with the NHEA contract, the following year the SEIU contract, and then the year after that the support services contract. We also have um, health care benefits that continue to rise, and at least currently we're in a very inflationary market. So with those variables in mind, that's kind of why we concluded, uh, I've concluded, um, to propose a modest tax increase for the next school year, and then um, that's where we sit at this point in time. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take them at this time. Um, Mr. Muth, um, can you detail out in this um, proposed final budget um, any new staff positions that we will be adding? Yes, contrary to what I have said publicly previously, um, in addition to one uh, position that's being added for enrollment in the fifth grade at McIntyre Elementary, I believe there's also a position in the high school um, which will be referenced in the board president's statement momentarily. Um, yeah, I do have some um, comments prepared on the budget, but I want to, I'm sure Jerry could answer questions after, but if anybody has any questions first that um, they'd like to ask him before I talk. Go ahead now. Okay. Um, so tonight we need to vote on the proposed final budget in order to comply with state requirements. And the key word to remember about this budget version, which I always like to emphasize, is that it's proposed because when we vote on the final budget on June 1st, it may look slightly different than this one and the board will work with the administration to make sure that the tax increase is as low as financially responsible. As Mr. Muth mentioned, this proposed budget includes a tax increase of 0.18 mills. And I, I often get asked what a mill is, so I just wanted to clarify in case you're not familiar with that term that a mill is $1 per $1,000 of assessed value. And as a reminder, 0.18 mills is less than the maximum amount we talked about in January when we voted not to ask for an increase beyond the maximum. And it's also less than last year's tax increase. Um, and as Mr. Muth indicated, this tax increase would be used for a capital project fund transfer. If this increase of 0.18 mills remains in the final budget, homeowners with a home valued at $150,000 would pay $27 more per year or $2.25 more per month. Of course, the increase would be more or less depending on the actual value of your home, but we like to give you a figure that you can use to estimate what the potential increase would mean for you. Our goal every year is to make sure we are asking for the lowest possible increase that will enable us to educate and serve our students and maintain our properties at the level our community expects. Personnel additions to the budget are taken cautiously if they, as they have a long-term impact, and this year's proposed budget contains just a couple of positions necessary for growing, growing enrollment. Um, we did also evaluate additional administrators, counselors, and support personnel. However, those positions are not included in the proposed budget at this time. So what this budget does contain is an additional high school learning support teacher, which is needed due to uh, the enrollment increase in special, the special education population at the high school, and an elementary uh, fifth grade teacher, which is needed due to increased sections at McIntyre Elementary in grade five. Just a few other long-term points to be made aware of. Um, this is Mr. Little's favorite part. You, <laughs> so first, as you know, and we will say this every year, we're still paying an unconscionable amount in charter school tuition. For example, this year there was uh, $1.6 million allotted in our budget for charter school tuition. So I'm not going to belabor that point but because it's you know up to the state legislator state legislature to give us some relief in that area, but it is a, a, a significant portion of our budget. Um, 
This proposed budget uses $1.1 million, or approximately 38% of our American Rescue Plan funding. That leaves us with about 23% of available funding, which is projected to be included in the 2024-2025 budget. And we will need to identify additional sources of revenue and or expenditure reductions to replace this diminishing fe federal funding, which is another reason why a small tax increase is fiscally responsible. Um, I'm looking forward to community feedback on the budget over the next 30 days, and I genuinely mean that. This budget is going to be available for public inspection in the District Administration Center from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. over the next 30 days. And if you have feedback on the budget, you may make public comments at the next board meeting or contact the board via email. So um, does anybody from the board have any other specific uh, questions or detailed comments or questions or comments on the budget um, before we move to a motion? Yeah, Mr. Muth, just one. Um, you mentioned capital funds. Can you kind of give me a breakdown of what we're looking at there, the dollar figures, and, and what it's going to be used for? The 500000 is just moving to the capital projects funds for we have a litany of projects that are sitting out there. We just have to make decisions as to which one we would like okay. to pursue, if any, at this point in time. Jerry, I could chime in on that. At the last uh, Building and Grounds Committee meeting, there was a list of roughly 56 items wow. that were in need of improvement at various costs. So whenever we say that there is a list, there actually is a list, a spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, that number is at 56, so there's that. Um, one other item, too, that makes this so difficult is that we have to kind of estimate based on what we think is going to get passed. And I always think that that's, that's rather unfair. And I know it seems like it's across education where our budget, uh, personally, at, at my job, has to be in by December before we go on break. But I have no idea what my enrollment is going to be for next year. And whenever a large portion of my budget is on consumables based on number of students that are signed up for my classes, I'm making an educated guess. Now, I, I know that our school budget deals a lot with funding that we get. So like you mentioned, with the governor's proposed budget, we might not always get those numbers. So having the additional funding uh, locally seems to be a prudent decision. And I, I, would, I would say that, you know, I think that for me, I'm, I'm okay. I, I feel good about our proposed final budget moving forward, but I do hope that over the next 30 days, some conversations do happen more around are there additional staff that we might want to include because, you know, we did, we did receive some requests. Um, and so, so if we, I guess for me, if, if, knowing that we do have projects that need to be funded is important but also i think if we have if we have the funding to move to capital projects then i do i do hope that we have more conversations around if there are additional staff we want to add to the final budget i'd like to make a comment it's a little bit more global than the specifics of the budget this is the first time we've had to consider a budget since a lawsuit um, determined that the way that Pennsylvania funds education is unconstitutional and that um, Congress, our state um, legislature, has been directed to revisit that. Um, to the extent that, and, and also I wanted to note that last year of the 500 school districts in Pennsylvania, 490 of them raised taxes. Um, to the extent that there is, a, I mean, I you know don't like raising taxes, um, when I consider the impact on, on fixed income houses, but um, I, you know, I, I very much support education. I hope that our um, state legislature considers that as well and, um, you know, helps us support education um, at a larger global level um, so that we're not in this position where we, this is our only recourse, really. I mean, we don't have any other way to get the funds that we need to continue to deal with raising costs associated with education. Any other questions for Mr. Muth? Comments? No? Okay. Um, the superintendent recommends, and I so move, that the board approve the 2023-2024 proposed final budget. D. Spade, I'll second that. Thank you, Mrs. Spade. Any additional discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, and now I'm going to toss it over to my co-chair, Mrs. Rennebeck, to finish off finance. I then move that finance items 5 through 10 be added to the legislative meeting agenda. That is general fund bills, capital project fund bills, food service fund bills, budget transfers, as well as payroll for the month of April 2023 in the amount of $3,407,556.88, as well as uh, a motion um, or for a taxpayer request, which was in a clerical error um, in the amount of $314.00. And 71 cents. So I move that those items 5 through 10 be added to the legislative meeting agenda. Is there a second? D. Spade, I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Mr. Little, it's your turn with education. All right, thank you, Madam President. Uh, first up, we have our assistant superintendent, Dr. Williams, who will be uh, giving us an update on curriculum council. Good evening. As you know, this year we had three departments present curriculum proposals, K through six science, seven through 12 English, and K through 12 business, computers, and information technology. If the budget is approved in June as is with regard to curriculum council purchases, this will be the third year in a row that we have been able as a district to purchase every request made through curriculum council. I'm really, really proud of that fact because I attribute that to the hard work of my curriculum leaders and their colleagues in their departments. They work tirelessly to review their programs, the ins and outs of them, and select materials and resources that are there to benefit the best educational opportunities for all of the diverse learning needs of our students. So not only are they doing that, but they are also incredibly fiscally responsible in doing so. So again, I'm here hopefully to say June 1st, it's yes with the budget because I can purchase everything that our teachers have requested. Any questions for me? Thank you. Oh, that was really short. Yeah. yeah really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to you, Mr. Little. All right. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, only th item up for consideration tonight is uh, item number three. Uh, that the board approve the AIU school-based program support services as per the attached. Uh, this agreement will be effective upon its approval and shall remain in effect until June 30, 2024. I move that item number three under education be added to the legislative meeting agenda. D. Spade, I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, Mrs. Poniatowski, you are up next with athletics and activities. We just have one item under athletics and activities, and it's for the music department for a trip. Um, not the <laughs> New York City trip tomorrow. But a year from now, um, a department trip to um, tour Virginia Beach and Williamsburg, and this will be for the marching band, concert band, symphonic band, Wind Symphony, Wind Ensemble, Jazz Band, um, Symphonic Choir, the North Hill Singers Orchestra, Chamber Orchestra um, are all invited on this tour. So it's a big one. <laughs> um, and that will be April 11th through 14th of 2024. Um, and the students will miss two days of school. And like all of the music um, department field trips, they will fundraise all the money for the trip. Um, the only cost of the district is for the substitute teachers for those two days. Uh, so I move that item two under athletics and activities be added to the legislative meeting agenda. And I will second that. Um, I just want to say I appreciate the music department giving us this information in advance before the fundraising started this year. Yes. And um, mm -hmm. um, just thank you to the music department for that. <laughs> Any other discussion? Um, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Santucci, do you have anything under buildings and grounds? Uh, yes, I just had one item. Uh, at our last meeting, we had a, a large showing for uh, of community members that spoke uh, in regards to the creation of a multi-purpose field area up here at the hilltop. Um, 
So coming up at our May 11th meeting, uh, we do have an architect who's coming to uh, give us some potential ideas as to what our area up here at the hilltop could look like. Uh, uh, so this does not in any way, shape, or form mean that we are going to pursue that, but that we are actually looking into pursuing that, if that makes sense. Uh, so. I just wanted to acknowledge that. I know that there was a gentleman here earlier, Mr. Muth, I know he you might have recognized him. He came straight from the hospital to go to the public budget meeting the last time because he felt so passionate about it. I wish he was still here to, uh, to at least hear that we heard their concerns and we heard their, uh, their visions and we are looking into it. And that's all. Thank you very much. Mrs. Neese, it's your turn for community and intergovernmental relations. Right, so the PSBA Delegate Assembly is scheduled for Saturday, November 4th, 2023, and will be a hybrid event. Um, North Hills may appoint up to three individuals to attend the assembly. Uh, some relevant facts, the appointed delegates will have the option to attend the event in person or virtually. The in-person gatherings will be held at the PSBA headquarters in Mechanicsburg. Due to space, only 120 people can go in person. Uh, board members wishing to participate should state their interest in being nominated. The board will vote to appoint at the May 11th, 2023 legislative meeting, and we must submit our certification of voting delegates to PSBA no later than Friday, August 25th, 2023. So I move that item two under community and intergovernmental relations be added to the legislative meeting agenda. And I, I think will second that. I do we need to discuss who those delegates would be? I yes. would like yes. to be a delegate. If uh, that's <laughs> yeah, I, I am not, I actually am one of the chairs of the delegate assembly, so I'm not able to be a delegate. Um, but as we mentioned earlier during Ms. Philpott's comments, um, you know, we do get three delegates um, for North Hills, which is more than some other school districts get, um, which gives us an opportunity to um, contribute to the legislative platform, so I think it's a really important service, and I hope that we can get three of us that are interested in doing it. Um, I just want to say I, I did it already, so I want to make sure someone else has another opportunity to do it. So I would do it again. Okay, I'm looking. So I've done it before as well. I'm happy yeah. to do it if um, if nobody else wants to, but same as Mr. Little. Mm -hmm. So if nobody else is interested. We can speak amongst ourselves. I, I would like to. No, I mean, I mean, Phil and I can speak amongst ourselves. Oh, so yeah, I, I want to give someone else an opportunity. Yeah. You guys yeah. can have a cage match. Yeah, I think we should. Yeah. Right here. Right. Yeah, let's right do here. It. Okay. Um, okay. So, okay. So, what are we actually moving forward then to the legislative meeting agenda? I, well, I think I the intent was for you to decide who you yeah. want to um, who wants who, to who show the interest, oh, so we and then to move now. their names forward so you could vote to elect them. Okay, so we have Ms. Philpott the is senior interested. Member, you do it. Ms. Niece is interested. I'll do it. And apparently, Ms. Cosera just got uh, <laughs> yeah. nominated by Mr. Little. So, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we already have a motion, and we had some discussion. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for volunteering to serve. <laughs> Ms. Cosera, you're up with policy now. Thanks. Or policies. Policies. Um, as Mrs. Mathis mentioned earlier, if there are, if any board members want to talk about the public participation policy, I'm happy to um, have that conversation. Um, I have two policies um, today. Um, the first one, thanks to um, Ms. Philpott for this. Um, she's updated um, policy 118 for homes, um, homeschooling po policy with revisions um, that reflect the amendments um, of the Omnibus School Code um, from recently. And um, in conjunction with that, we are proposing to retire policy um, 237 parent involvement because it is duplicative of policy 918. So right now they more or less have exactly the same information in them. So upon review, we determine we don't need um, 237 anymore. Um, so with that said, I move that items two and three under policy be added to the legislative meeting agenda. D. Spade, I'll second that. Thank you, Mrs. Spade. Any discussion? I just had one question. Ms. Cazare, you said 237 is duplicative of 918, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Is that not? 
I, I was just wondering. Yeah. I just wanted to I think not it's, have the it's number. One yeah, that's right. It's 118. 118? Well, it's 118 is being updated, but 918 is oh. title, so it's just. That's the one I was talking about. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. So there's two 18s okay. involved in this. Okay. The two different ones. Gotcha. Yeah. I just, I just have, um, I have a couple questions um, just to clarify. So in our policy, there are two little sentences that the PSBA does not have, and it's probably just because we're putting – I just want to make sure that that it's okay what we have in here. The first one is that um, we don't let homeschool um, – home education students participate in our graduation. Or if that's not – we are allowed to do that because the PSBA doesn't have that in their policy. Are you looking at this documentary now? Yeah. Yeah, I think we've agreed a long time ago that the home educated student does not receive a North Hills diploma, does not participate in our uh, graduation ceremony. Okay. They're, they're not our student. We review the services of home education, but they're not a North Hills student. They don't receive a North Hills diploma. Okay. Yeah, the, the diploma is in here. It's just the graduation thing. I just wanted to make sure we were allowed to. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then the PIAA and the WIPIL language is in ours but not in theirs? Is that just because it's, it says here that they're not eligible for participation in PIAA or WIPIL athletics unless, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not in the PSBA policy? But that's, it's just, that's allowed? Yes. Okay. Um, and then there was a whole, the PSBA policy had a whole section on, like, Beatty stuff that's not, so where? We do have a language of, in Beatty, didn't mm -hmm. it? And just, I think they had a yeah. whole separate policy. On they that's did. What it was, we, yeah. added the we added this sentence here, yeah. That we allow home educated students to there participate in our career education program. Okay. We do allow yeah, it. they had like a whole section yeah, about I, it. I reviewed it. I didn't think that there was a need to have an entire policy okay. that just says the whole policy says that you can let them participate in your career education program. So we added that sentence okay. to this policy. Yeah. Sounds that's good. Right. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Cozera. Ms. Philpot, you're up with health and wellness. Do you have anything this evening? Yeah, I'll just give um, two updates. I feel like we've been talking about this for a year now, um, but I have Mr. Muth is, is going to look into the, um, the status on getting a middle school dishwasher. Oh. It still has not been installed, um, so we're going to find out what's going on with that because we were supposed to start using reusable trays and whatnot. Um, and then uh, Mrs. Radskin is also looking into a grant opportunity right now that would be um, districts can get up to $150,000 for like nutrition education, starting to cook from scratch, et cetera. Um, it's for small and rural districts, and the small cutoff is um, 5,000 students, so we just make it. Okay. Um, so she's looking into into that. So that would be a pretty big grant for us if we would apply and get it. That's great. Mm -hmm. what, may I ask, um, since we've been talking about it for a while, what, <laughs> what the situation with the dishwasher is? Is it a supply chain issue or? Uh, I apologize. I haven't had that conversation oh, okay. recently. So okay. uh, for all I know, it could be there. All I'm right. not sure yet. Mrs. Spade, it's your term with personnel. Thank you. You're welcome. Personal items are discussed in executive session. The superintendent recommends, and I so move that the board approve personnel items one through three. Mike Santucci, I'll second that. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> <laughs> okay, motion carries. Um, <laughs> Next up, we have A.W. Beatty Career Center and Ms. Mrs. Rennebeck or Mrs. Spade. Do you have anything you want to say? Uh, the only thing I'd like to say, at the last meeting, I did hear some interesting uh, information. They're going to have some classes at Beatty that they don't need a classroom for. And um, what they're going to use them with is the um, EMS and mm -hmm. Nursing training, and they're going. What do you call them? Things. The drone. The drone. They're teach. They're going to teach the kids. <laughs> they're going to teach the kids how to use the drones, and they showed us on film how they used them to find somebody that was hurt in the woods. This was all pretend, and the drone flew over, located the person, 
and the EMS and the right people were able to go to them, find them very easily, and have them removed to a safer position. And I think it's just wonderful how they just keep moving forward with technology and anything they can for our kids at Beatty. It's a wonderful place. So Indeed. Yours. Oh, thank you. Um, it's so important to mention, and Ms. Pollitt, do we have pictures that we can show while I'm sort of going through this? So eight A.W. Beatty students, including st two students from North Hills, took home four state championships at the Pennsylvania wow. Skills USA competition nice. that was held in Hershey. We were waiting on bated breath to find out who the winners were a week ago. So pretty cool. Um, the Career Pathways Showcase team of Mila Burnett, Nick Schultz, and Primrose Sobek, who presented here, if you all recall, um, mm -hmm. you know, to show what our logos were going to look like. They're the students who designed the branding package and fonts for our district at the March 2nd board meeting. Um, so, it's, you know, congratulations to all. So many different schools were represented. Additionally, North Hill senior Riley Welsh placed third in the baking and pastry arts at the same competition. First place winners who qualify for nas nationals, excuse me, in Career Pathways Showcase Arts and Communications team. Um, again, Nick Schultz, shout out. And um, for, I just want to make sure, Career Pathways Showcase Industrial and Engineering Technology team, Austin Kessler. And second place, no, I'm sorry, third place was Riley Walsh. So congratulations to all of them. Also want to make mention that um, there is still room, most of the summer classes are actually filled at this point, but the HVAC fixers, automotive mania, and construction worker summer camps are still available and registration is still up. That's happening from June 12th to the 15th, and that's of course for students entering grades 6 through 9 in the fall, so make sure you visit their website uh, for more information on registering. Um, in addition, I have a motion to add the um, Beatty items to the legislative meeting agenda. Um, so it's that the board approved the 2023-24 operating budget for A.W. Beatty Career Center per the attached. The A.W. Beatty operating budget billing is based on a five-year average of the average daily membership on March, 30, on March 1st as verified by the member districts. The member districts are the primary source of funding support for A.W. Beatty Career Center operating budget and it is in the amount of $1,333,961. So, Allie, I'll do this again. <laughs> um, I move that item number two under A.W. Beatty Career Center be added to the legislative meeting agenda. Go ahead. I'll is there a second? <laughs> I will second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we have a lot of people signed up for public comments on non-agenda items. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read our public participation policy. The board recognizes the value to school governance of public comment on educational issues and the importance of involving members of the public in board meetings. The board also recognizes its responsibility for proper governance of the district and the need to conduct its business in an orderly and efficient manner. We would like to invite any resident, taxpayer, or employee of the North Hills School District who wishes to address the board to come forward at this time. It is our policy to strongly encourage such public participation in as much as it provides the board with an important source of ideas, as well as informs us of many concerns in the district. The board has limited public comment by a participant to three minutes in duration, and no participant may speak more than once per meeting on the same topic. And I'm going to ask Mr. Weatherall, do the participants need to state their address? They do not uh, okay. only confirm that they're a resident, taxpayer, or employee of the district. Okay, so when you go up to speak, if you could just confirm that you are a resident, taxpayer, or employee, I will go in order. And first, we have Vicki Trushan. Hi everyone, my name is Vicki Trushan. I am an employee of the school district. I'm an eighth grade English teacher in our school district and I am also the proud president of the North Hills Education Association. I would like to begin by thanking our district officials and school board. 
As an association leader, I have attended most of the board meetings in the last several years, and I have only heard supportive and complimentary statements from our school board and our administration. For the first time in all of these years while sitting in this room, I heard negative words about one of our teachers during the last board meeting. During that meeting, a public comment with multiple unfounded accusations, and it was made about a North Hill school teacher. This comment villainized one of our teachers by name, which we find unacceptable as an association. This statement questioned the character of a dedicated teacher and a 2014 North Hills graduate. This teacher has followed all administrative directives and board policies during her five-year tenure as a North Hills employee and is considered to be an excellent teacher. While it is the right of all of us to speak publicly and freely, we must find a way to do so respectfully. Disagreements can be healthy and elicit change, but only when everyone involved is at the table and can participate in the conversation while showing mutual respect for each other. With this said, this issue is not only about the teacher who was criticized at the last meeting, but all professional educators who work tirelessly every day for the students of this school district. And I would stand before you supporting any one of them put in this terrible situation. Our teachers at North Hills, we are the best that exist. I am proud every single day I walk into school and I see the extraordinary educational opportunities that are occurring within the walls of our classrooms. The published vision of the North Hills School District is to provide a nurturing, inclusive, and academically challenging environment with equitable, equitable opportunities for every student. This and this alone is what our teachers do. We're teaching children to be critical thinkers, kind and respectful people. We are devoted to our craft and committed to the students in our care. We are trained professionals who have dedicated our lives to the children who live in this community. Parents, community members, and educators, we have to work together to ensure we continue to listen to and respect each other. Our children are watching. They're watching how we handle a world that is full of all of this divisive rhetoric, and we must model how to navigate disagreements with mutual respect for one another in order to create an open dialogue to do what is best for all of our students. It is my hope that together, we will create a culture of critical thinkers that have the ability to communicate, to care, and help those around them. The teachers in our district work every single day to do this so that our students can be positive and productive members of our community after graduation. That alone is our goal and our focus, as well as the purpose of public education in general. Thank you. Tiffany Broderick. Hi, Tiffany. Oh, wait, I'm too short. Okay, there we go. Hi, Tiffany Broderick, 187 Baker Drive. I'm a mother, a wife, a teacher of 19 years, a volunteer track coach, and a 36 year resident. I'm here to ask the North Hill School Board to support their teachers. As a veteran teacher, I know teaching quite well. State-funded public schools have a duty to ensure that every child is provided the opportunity to learn and thrive. Inclusivity of race, gender, or sexual orientation is a hot topic right now. The school must provide a safe place for students. Please keep in mind the students come from different homes and many North Hills teachers have happily exhausted themselves trying to help. The classroom libraries have a variety of books. This provides a safe place and a resource to help students through these times where they might be questioning things. If a book offends you or your family, don't take it. Talk to your kid and tell them to select another book. There are plenty of books to choose from, but you must keep the books there for the kids who need them. The world is changing at a rapid rate. The after-school cartoons we all watched when we got home from school are now replaced with social media platforms driving very curious questions at a much younger age. I'm sure your kids don't use those sites at your home, but little Johnny on the bus does. 
Lies spread fast through a school bus, faster than a forest fire. We don't know everything about our kids, but that's where our teachers that are trained to be able to step in into different rules at school and allow the kids to address questions, feel safe, and supported. At the last school board meeting, it was, it was insinuated that our schools are indoctrinating our students. Inflammatory terms like indoctrination and book banding are being flung around school board meetings everywhere in the US. Now these terms are showing up in our meetings. It's concerning. Wait, there is teacher indoctrination occurring in our schools. The indoctrination that math is amazing, reading rocks, kindness matters, and bullies never win. That's the best type of indoctrination. Way to go, teachers. Just recently, Governor Shapiro honored a teacher. The board had an opportunity to show the state what a wonderful, inclusive, safe place North Hills School District is. The post was lovely, and I was so proud of the North Hills. Before I could refer, refer a friend to read it, the post was taken down. Instead of honoring that teacher, you caved. You caved and you gave in to an angry, disgruntled resident. You gave in. You threw her to the wolves. None of you spoke up or even silenced the microphone, even when a parent said her name four times. Throwing her name out there where residents use words of perversion and defamation to make irrational comments. This teacher was painted <coughs> as a villain. She is not. Her fun, high energy, caring, accepting, interactive classroom, which has only sparked maybe some energy in some veteran teachers, <clears throat> is a special thing. North Hill School Board, I ask you to support your teachers. Know you did the best in hiring the best. Trust that your teachers are there to uplift, empower, and teach these students. Your teachers do not need another critic right now. They need your support. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Allison Broderick. I'm sorry, what? Okay. Lynn Belletti. Okay, Michelle Kerber. Okay, Julie Wilkinson. Perfect height for me, Tiffany Broderick, perfect height. So I'm Julie Wilkinson, I am a resident and I am a parent of a, a student who is in that teacher's classroom. So I just wanna echo what others have said about showing kindness and respect towards one another. It's one thing to have critique and criticism and disagreements, but to put someone's name on blast is inappropriate, it's not productive, and it can, can, can create almost a dangerous situation for that individual, the students, and that school. So we just need to be better to have a respectful platform where we can have disagreements, we can have those discussions, and you'll have more people willing to listen when you're going for the concern and not the person. I also would like to share my narrative about a parent in that classroom, and it is just amazing. Like, I wish I was a student there. Not only does that teacher implement strategies that are research-based for educational strategies, like differentiating instruction, she does scaffolding techniques and approaches, she uses the curriculum provided by the district along with the standards provided by the state, but she makes it fun and engaging. There's a book tasting party, we're having some slam poetry going on, we're going to celebrate that you graduated first in math, or I ready, and if you have students or children who do I ready, you know they are not wanting to do I ready, but the third grade makes it fun and exciting and engaging. She knows how to connect with students. She builds that rapport. Not only is she concerned about the ABCs and one, two, threes, but she wants to get to know your child. She wants to know their interests. She wants to know what do they struggle with and how can she help them find coping mechanisms. She wants to teach them how to be critical thinkers in a world where you want information just like that. She pushes them to think outside the box and how to cooperate with one another and work with one another and accept somebody who is different than you. I could go on and on and on about all the amazing things about this teacher, but I went to the source, my child, and I asked my child, if you could describe that teacher in three words or phrases, just what would you say, just out of curiosity? She told me, well, I cannot do three because I have way too many things to say, but I guess I'll just give you five. So here are the fives from a student's point of view. She's fun, funny, she said that considers one, even though I told her those are two words, but she said, nope, that's one. Kind-hearted, makes learning fun, athletic, I think that's a little hats off to recess because she engages with her students. She's just not at recess 
watching. She is participating with them. And then she ended it with the best teacher ever. This teacher has had such a profound impact on my child that I want more teachers like this teacher. We could all learn from this teacher. And to that special teacher that's near and dear to my heart, continue to make the whole place shimmer. John Hoffman. Yes, good evening. John Hoffman. I am a resident and a taxpayer of uh, North Hills. Uh, I'm going to change the topic a little bit, dealing with the field. Uh, last time I was here, I asked the board to consider uh, some additional items, including the environmental impact of uh, what is being considered. Um, I am actually more of my position. I'm now against the field. Uh, upon some more consideration, I have found that the major leagues are moving towards natural turf which we have right outside our door. Uh, the reason why they're doing that is injuries. Now, it was stated that the field has a few issues uh, where balls can jump up and uh, hit the kids, where there's a rim of dirt around the, uh, the baseline. That is a maintenance item that can be addressed by a plow. Also, there is a grate that's out there. Uh, yes, that is a hazard for kids who are running across the field. Uh, let's fix that. Let's get that out where, where it can be best used and grade the field so that it doesn't flood the way that it's reported to do. Um, also, I'll, I'll restate, since we have a very good turnout this evening, uh, some of the items I discussed last week. Um, we have some neighbors in Sharpsburg who a number of years ago were flooded. Well, that flooding starts from all of our neighborhoods north. You know, there's the Gertie's Run project, which many of us uh, are familiar with. That was a flood control project. If we cover this field with AstroTurf, a, uh, an oil-based product, where is all that water going to go? Well, probably the uh, obvious place is Gertie's Run and then down to our neighbors in Sharpsburg. Uh, we need to consider that with whatever we decide to do. Thank you for your time. Um, Greg uh, Ganabi, Ganabi. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Thank you, Greg Ganabi. Uh, I live at 12 Schutzen Park Road. I'm a North Hills taxpayer since uh, 1995. Um, I just wanted to um, to carry forward here the uh, the comments that have been made about this teacher. Um, I have a personal relationship with this teacher. She's my daughter-in-law. So I'm going to put that out there, too. But um, I mean, I got pulled into this um, as I was reading some, some very disparaging comments on social media that were going on about her. And um, it, was, it, it was appalling what was being said. Um, and a lot of this stuff was being said with no basis in fact. It was um, very uh, libelous. Uh, I guess would be a good way to put it. So, um, I mean, you guys, uh, you, you, you've made a good decision to hire her, right? Um, she's, she's very innovative. Um, she's very caring to the students. Um, she makes so many personal sacrifices of her own uh, to, to be the best that she can be there. And also, um, you know, what she provides <coughs> Uh, on her own financially for that classroom. So um, uh, just to, you know, reiterate what the others have said, you have to support her. Um, these people that are coming out against her have no basis in fact for what they're saying. We're talking about a book that's on a shelf and somebody else had said it, you know, if you don't want your kid to read the book, tell them not to read the book and go <coughs> over uh, the topic with them. Be a parent. So um, I just wanted to come here and voice my support for her, and um, I'm hoping that you will follow along. Thank you. Lindsay McCamish. I 
Okay. Um, Stephanie, I'm sorry, it's hard to read this. Stephanie Fa Fairley? Sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, I'm Stephanie Fairley, district employee. Sorry, I could try not to cry. Hi, my name is Stephanie Fairley. I'm a teacher in the district. In the last school board meeting, a teacher, a colleague, and most importantly, my friend was slandered. Now I'm gonna go. <laughs> Sorry. The accusations made against this teacher were false. The issue at hand are now being clouded by these false accusations and have caused a rift between so many people. This teacher's goal was to create inspiration, real talk, positivity, and to form a community of educators. I think we can all agree that this profession has no walk in the park. Most jobs are not. We not only have to worry about our own well-beings, but the well-beings of 20 plus small humans. There are hopes we have to jump through, or sorry, hoops we have to jump through. Boxes to be checked, I's to be dotted, T's to be crossed. None of us joined this profession if it was not for our passion. We genuinely want all of the students that we come across to have the brightest, best futures they possibly can. And this is no different for this teacher. Sorry, thank you. This teacher is truly a phenomenal educator. I wish I was half the educator she is. She prioritizes her students, their well beings as a whole, their lives inside and out of the classroom, and their happiness. How many teachers do you know that attend their students' soccer games in their free time? How many teachers do you know spend countless hours outside of the school day turning their classroom into a pizza parlor or a carnival? How many teachers do you know that teach and practice not mindfulness to their students so their students have the tools to cope in this world where the mental health crisis is so overwhelming? Every student that walks into this teacher's room feels like they have a safe space, that they have a voice, that they are loved, and that they matter. Isn't that what we want for all of our kids? I know I would fight tooth and nail to have a teacher that cares that much. As a board, I challenge you to look to the students, parents, and families that have actually been involved in or affected by this teacher's classroom. Take with a grain of salt the naysayers who see a false accusation on Facebook and run away with claims that could not be farther from the truth. As a board, I'm asking you to support and have the back of one of, arguably, one of the best educators in this district. It would be an absolute disgrace to see this teacher pushed out because we could not support them when they needed it most. We should be screaming her name from the rooftops rather than trying to sweep her under the rug or delete posts that the district once bragged about. I'd like to praise this teacher for all of her continuous hard work, her dedication to her students, and creating a forum for teachers to learn, grow, and find inspiration. This profession is hard enough. We are beginning to see the teacher shortages across our nation. The last thing we need is the pressure of outsiders pushing us out. If we don't put down our foot here, what's to come next? Thank you. Thank you. I would like to announce that the next meeting of the Board of Education is scheduled for Thursday, May 11th, 2023 at the North Hills Middle School LGI room here at 7 p.m. And as a reminder, the uh, proposed budget will be on display for the next 30 days. With no other business, I will move to adjourn the meeting.